In today's video, we're again going to do the explicit calculation of the Taylor expansion for a specific function. In this case, we are going to do the Taylor expansion for the function f of x is equal to the cosine of x. And again, taking the Taylor expansion basically means that we want to rewrite our function as a polynomial such that it approximates this function when x is very small. So we're going to do the Taylor expansion around x is approximately zero. So let's dive right in. Again, we're going to start from the general form of the Taylor expansion. And if you are not familiar with this form, I gladly refer you to my previous video where I cover each symbol in detail. Now, what is most important here is this notation right here. It basically is the nth derivative of the function that we're Taylor expanding filled in in x is equal to zero. So first take the nth derivative and then simply fill in x is equal to zero. As you can see, we will approximate this function by a polynomial, meaning a sum of terms. So we can write that the cosine of x is approximately equal to, and then we're going to calculate the terms where each term adds additional accuracy to our approximation. So let's just take the first term as an example. We have that n is equal to zero. In this case, we have f zero of zero. So the zeroth derivative filled in in x is equal to zero divided by zero factorial multiplied by x to the power of zero. Now we know that the zeroth derivative of a function is simply the function itself. So here we get the cosine of zero multiplied by one over zero factorial, which is of course simply one, multiplied by x to the power of zero, which is also one. We know that the cosine of zero is equal to one, so we get one multiplied by one, multiplied by one. And the first term in our Taylor expansion is simply one. And this makes a lot of sense because we know that the cosine of zero, where x is exactly equal to zero, is of course simply equal to one. And that has to be true, even if it's just an approximation. So we already know that if x is zero, the cosine has to be one. Let's now take further terms to see what the cosine of x would be if x is not equal to one, but just very, very small. So in the second term, we will be looking at n is equal to one. Here we get f one of zero, so the first derivative filled in, in x is equal to zero, divided by one factorial multiplied by x to the power of one. We know that the first derivative of the cosine of x is minus the sine of x. And in this case, we fill in x is equal to zero, so we get minus the sine of zero. We multiply this with one divided by one factorial, and one factorial is just one, multiplied by x to the power of one. In this case, because we know that the sine of zero is equal to zero, we get zero multiplied by one multiplied by x. And since this is a multiplication which contains a zero, we simply get zero. So we add a zero to our one, but because adding zero simply does nothing, we just omit it. And we see that even up to first order, the cosine of x is equal to one if x is very, very small. So let's increase this accuracy by looking at further terms. And looking at higher order terms will also allow us to discern a pattern. So we look at n is equal to two. In this case, we get f2 of zero, so the second derivative of the cosine of x filled in in zero, divided by two factorial, multiplied by x to the power of two. We know that the second derivative of the cosine of x is simply minus the cosine of x. And we fill in x is equal to zero, so we get minus the cosine of zero. We multiply by one over two factorial, which is just one over two, multiplied by x squared. In this case, we again note that the cosine of zero is equal to one. So we get one multiplied by one over two factorial, multiplied by x squared. And so we get equal to x to the power of two, divided by two factorial. And we can add this to our expansion. So we get one over two factorial multiplied by x to the power of two. 
So we see that if x deviates a small amount from zero, the cosine of x will deviate also a small amount from one. And this deviation is given by this one over two factorial times x squared. Let's now look at the last term that we will explicitly calculate, just so the pattern will be clear. So we have f3 of zero, so the third derivative of the cosine of x filled in in x is equal to zero, divided by three factorial multiplied by x to the power of three. Now this will be equal to the sine of x filled in x is equal to zero, so the sine of zero, multiplied by one over three factorial, multiplied by x to the power of three. This again will be zero, since the sine of zero is always zero, multiplied by one over three factorial, multiplied by x to the power of three, which is of course zero. So let's see if we can find a pattern from these four calculations that we did. First, we see that all of the odd terms, so the odd derivatives, which is for n is equal to one and n is equal to three, where we have the first and the third derivative, in these cases, we will always get a sine function. And since we are filling in these derivatives in x is equal to zero, we will always get the sine of zero, which is of course always zero. And because this occurs in a multiplication, these terms will always be zero. And so we will never get odd terms in the Taylor expansion for the cosine of x. For the even terms, it's the other way around. So in the case of n is equal to zero, n is equal to two, and all of the even terms that come after it. In these cases, we will always get plus or minus the cosine of zero, which thus will always be plus or minus one. We see that for n is equal to zero, we get the cosine of zero. And for n is equal to two, we get minus the cosine of zero. And this, this sign always alternates. And the third thing that we can note is that the remaining factors in our terms will always be one over n factorial multiplied by x to the power of n. And if we bring all of these patterns together, we find that the cosine of x can be written as the sum of n is equal to zero to infinity of minus one to the power of n, which gives this alternating plus minus sign, multiplied by one over two n factorial multiplied by x to the power of 2n. And this 2n takes into account that we only have the even terms. So we can now use this pattern to simply continue writing down terms in the Taylor expansion. We explicitly calculated 1 minus 1 over 2 factorial times x squared. But now we can continue and just write plus 1 over 4 factorial times x to the power of 4 minus one over six factorial times x to the power of six plus one over eight factorial times x to the power of eight and so on and so on. And a few things that we can notice here is that if x is equal to zero, meaning the cosine of exactly zero, all these terms with an x drop out and we are left with only this one. And since the cosine of zero is exactly equal to one, this can serve as a good sanity check. Also note that the cosine is an even function, meaning that if we swap x to minus x, that nothing happens to the output of this function. And we see that we have only x to the power of even numbers, meaning that also each term in this series is an even function. And thus the Taylor expansion is also an even function. Again, a sanity check. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, you can of course always subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.